Are you listening? Damn. Hi guys, I'm Megan with Loserly VSG. I had VSG surgery in 2018. I had excess skin removal in 2020, and this is my nine week follow up. I'm gonna need my phone because I have been writing down notes for you guys. So if you see this little dot here, it's just my zip up bra, don't worry. So I am 33 years old, I am five foot seven, and I right now weigh about 178 pounds. My lowest is like 169 for a second. That's about it. I went into surgery my skin removal surgery weighing 176 I believe and so nine weeks out I am just two pounds heavier I had heard stories about um, like a 10 to 15 pound weight gain after surgery for all different reasons but like mostly swelling so I was expecting I really wasn't gonna weigh um, in for months but I just happened to one morning be by the scale and no, it wasn't even morning. One evening, which I usually don't dare weigh in the evenings, but I just happened to be by the scale one evening and jump on it and it was 178. So only two pounds up since surgery. So at six weeks out is when I first jumped on the scale and it showed 178 and then I did it again last week at eight weeks and I was still 178. So. Holding steady at that 178, I do want to, I'm fine, I'm fine with that. I'm actually really happy that it's not any higher. Um, but my goal weight would probably be like 170. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice if it was lower, but 170 sounds good to me. All right, so January 2nd was the first time I tried to, not the first time I tried, yeah. Well, so, Every once in a while when you're messaging with the doctors, they'll tell you like what your next step should be. Not always, it's lacking in some areas, but um, at one point he told me like, okay, you need to try to lay down flat now. And so that only took a couple tries. I mean, I pretty much could, but you could feel it like in your hip bones. And so now I can lay down flat, no problem. But January 2nd was the first time I tried to, no, January 2nd was the first night I spent all night in bed. I can't say that I've had many nights like that since then. Sometimes I will start in the chair and then move to the bed, but usually I start in the bed with my husband and then usually about five o'clock move to the chair. Sometimes it's earlier, it's just, I, it's not that comfortable yet to just lay on your back in bed. So I do it for as long as I can and then if I can't get comfortable, I get up in my chair and sleep until my alarm goes off at six o'clock. That first night that I did sleep in the bed though and for several nights to follow, I could not get up myself. Like if I had to get up or go the, you know, readjust or if I had to go to the bathroom, I'd have to wake my husband up and he would, in the beginning he'd like get up and get me up but then as time passed, <laughs> He would just reach his arm up and I would grab it and like he would pull me up with his one arm. Sometimes he'd put a hand behind my head and like push me up. And then I learned to roll out of bed. So then I, I found if I slowly rolled to my left side, I could just kind of use my legs and a little bit of my arms to push me up out of bed. So then I started doing that. I'd lay in bed till as long as I could and then roll up, roll slowly to my left side, use my legs and a little bit of my arm strength to pull me up. At week seven, um, I found that I could sleep on my side. Once I get there, it's okay, but it, it stretches a lot um, over here on the side of my boob. Um, I feel I feel the stretching and it doesn't feel comfortable so I don't I don't do it often and I've never been fond of the crease that it makes down the middle of your chest when you lay on your side and I had forgot about it because I've been laying on my back for so long and one morning I woke up from laying on my side I can lay on my left side better than my right side but I woke up and I saw that line down the middle of my chest and I'm just not prepared for that wrinkle yet. So I've been trying not to lay on my side, even though it gives me a little bit of relief from my back. 
I just don't do it much, so that is an option. Also at seven weeks, I drove for the first time like an hour and a half. So my parents live about an hour and a half away from me. I was not driving, I'm used to going there all the time, um, but I had not been going because I could not drive that far. And that, when I was comfortable driving short distances, my arms weren't swelling, then I was able to make that one and a half drive to my parents and back and I've done it a couple times now with no problem. Um, so. Arm stretches are super important. Now I think I'm, I'm good, I mean I still do them, but in the beginning, you've probably seen, if you've watched any of my other videos, I have one where I am stretching my arms, but it starts out as like you can't get your arms any higher than this, and then you're like slowly trying, slowly trying, and you're trying to reach up. And my arm stretches now, I do all different directions. I do behind my back, reaching my bra line. I do across my body like this. I do, I haven't tried to reach up today. So that's one thing is like, once I get up there, I'm fine. But right now I can't just, like I can, I can put it up, no problem. Like I feel it a little bit in my armpit. But nothing like I used to. It used to be pulling so bad. I would like pulsate to get it up. I did arm stretches at least once a day, if not twice a day, just stretching them anytime I could. Um, so I would reach up, reach across, reach top of my head, and then do, you know, reach across, back behind your back. And then once I got each arm done, then it was harder. It, that was okay, but it was harder than to do both of them at the same time. So um, I'm pretty much good on that. I can reach yesterday. For some reason, I was so worried about being able to shoot baskets. So I was like, am I gonna, this this arm was like super tight, so I'm like, and that's my shooting arm, and I'm like, am I gonna be able to shoot basketball? But I am, last night I was just, I wasn't shooting baskets, but in my living room, I was doing the motion, the arm way up, all of that, and um, was having no problem. So if that's a concern of yours, <laughs> don't worry, because um, if you work it like you're supposed to, some people have to go to physical therapy, but I think if you work it, work on it at home, you can get it, so don't worry. When I was researching this journey, and in this journey, a lot of people would talk about the itchy phase, and like the healing phase, and having to get medicine for the itching, and I even, because of that, got those like things that you can itch yourself. I never went through the itching phase. Um, I, don't, I don't know why, I don't know, I mean, I'm sure, I know we're all different, but, just so you know, it doesn't happen to everybody. I never did. I bought Benadryl, but never had to take Benadryl. I never was like scratching my skin off. I did use the scratcher tool, um, like when I couldn't get my arms all the way up, if my head itched or the back or my back itched, um, those came in handy there, but otherwise, no. And you know, I got that grabber tool and I rarely needed to use it. If your legs aren't done and you can squat, which I guess your belly might be tender, but I had people here who could get things for me. I could bend down and get things and I very very rarely use that the grabber thing and I still don't use it so something to think about I documented my first sneeze because I went so long I went what was it like seven no like six or seven weeks without sneezing I was so scared and I told you guys like I would stop sneezes and this one on January 5th I could not hold it in and I sneezed. And it hurt my stomach for a second and it still does if I sneeze. Um, I just try to push on my belly. Coughing is not as bad anymore. Um, I mean, I can still feel it, but it's nothing too awful. But the sneeze, it hurts a little bit and so I just try to push on my belly and I try, I still try not to sneeze, but if I, I have now and if I do, it just hurts for a second. So I know that will go away soon. January 11th was my first day back to work. I work in an office. I sit in an office chair. I work in front of a computer and everything was okay except I was more swollen than I anticipated being in my stomach. Nothing else, just my stomach. I think it was because I had to sit up all day. When I was working from home, I was able to sit up in a chair or lay back in my chair and work. You know, I could move, I could get comfortable, but I had to be sitting in a chair all day and I was like very up and down, up and down, up and down. So so a lot of movement, movement like up and down out of my chair, but then when I wasn't, I was sitting in the chair and so my stomach was just very swollen. So I couldn't wait to get home, put on comfy pants and just relax. Um, it still does, that has not changed. I mean, it's not as uncomfortable, 
but it still does get swollen throughout the day. So yesterday was January 19th and that was my first day trying the 12 on 12 off with the Faja. Now, after like while while you're there in Mexico, they send you this post-op summary that like goes over wounds and your Faja, but that becomes like a distant memory and I just happened to see one of the girls who had surgery after me um doing the 12 on 12 off with the faja and yes in the post-op summary it says like after four to six weeks you can try to start doing the 12 on 12 off i just assumed that a doctor would tell me but i'm like rolling into nine weeks and hadn't been told anything so i was like well i guess it's probably time so i'm doing seven to seven so seven at night to seven in the morning and I wear my faja while I'm sleeping. I also don't know if it's supposed to be like on while you're sleeping or on where when you're moving around in the day. I don't know. So I do have emails into the doctor just waiting. It's been three days waiting for an answer. Um, so 12 or yeah, 12 hours while I'm sleeping with it off. And then I go seven to seven during the day at work without the faja and it's going okay. It's not like more swollen than it was with it on or it's it's really no no different. It was like still it still felt swollen with the faja and it feels swollen without the faja. So I did change up my faja though. I was using just the is it Morena brand? The stage 2, the pull up one that buttoned in the crotch and my stomach was just I wasn't seeing any improvement in it. It was still swollen and I just thought maybe I should see some kind of improvement. I was like, maybe it's not tight enough. I was, I don't know, it was just, so I found this um, like waist trainer that I had from a long time ago and I just put it on the fur. It's just one that just goes like underneath my boobs and down like low enough for my scar and just buckled it on the first buckle and it made a huge improvement in my stomach. When I got it off, my stomach was like flat. It was amazing. So that's what I've been worried about not having. I'm like, for some reason I don't have a flat stomach. Like, thought something was medically wrong with my stomach. No, it was just swelling and I didn't have enough compression on it to do anything. So I've not been wearing the Morena Faja. I've just been wearing this waist trainer with the little snaps in it. I do have to snap it in the back. So they're made to be snapped in the front, but because the way my belly button is set up, um, it gets irritated when it's like squished together and whatever reason. So when I was buttoning it in front, like it was squishing everything in the front. If I buckle it in the back, everything's like pulled nicely in the front and nothing gets irritated. So that is, I'll try to, I'll try to remember to get some video in it or like a seven tonight when I put it on, I might do a little picture in it or something to show you what I'm talking about. So. It has done the best job so far and I, I got it a long time ago. It didn't fit me ever and I just remembered it was in my closet. I thought I'll give it a try and it's 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 doing good for me. So there's that. I guess it was January 18th was my first day. January Yesterday was not the first day. January 18th was the first day. So um, it's gotten better being at work every day. Just like when my arms were swollen. It's just like every, every time I tried after to drive, um, my arms felt better and better so i know it's gonna be tough for a while but we will work through it i think that's really it i haven't done um like a weekly video because there's not much to update you on like i'm just still healing i'm eating the same foods to keep my body healing um some days i'm really good on my water some days i'm not but it's always been a struggle for me um i still have I don't think, I don't know if this camera will show you guys, but I still have that rash slash acne thing happening to the side of my neck and my chest. So I sent Dr. Sanchez a picture of it. Um, he didn't really know. He asked if I was on new medications and I'm not. I've been on the same medication since before surgery. He told me to get some benzoyl peroxide. So I have this little, I got it yesterday, this Neutrogena on the spot acne treatment. It has benzoyl peroxide in it. It's not gonna focus. Um, but I've tried, I'm going to start trying to put it on and see if it, and I got a face wash that has some stuff in it too. So hopefully that will help 
and hopefully he'll get back to me on some questions I have that I can share with you guys. So that's really it for the update. Let me know if you have any questions and I will be back when I have more to talk about. Bye guys.